Hello, uh, the practitioner here, bachelor of science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, um, magician, uh, and parapsych researcher, um, parapsychology researcher. Um, if you hold, if you won't mind me uh, chipping my two cents in here, um, as I've said before, I'm on uh, my previous videos. I'm still something of a, well, uh, actually, given my current position, uh, given the fact of how I flip flopped about the issue about what telepathy being more likely than not requiring. You know, the meta-analyses not having quite enough evidence, needing, you know, further research, um, you know, trying to determine whether, you know, these the, the, the everyday events that we have in terms of, you know, spontaneous telepathy or just coincidence and other factors of actual telepathy. I'm kind of flopping, flip-flopping back about the issue. Let's just say I'm kind of in the middle. I'm a technical agnostic and a Fortean skeptic is what I would call myself. Um, highly open-minded. Um, even leaning in some ways towards the idea. But anyway, I digress. Um, the thing is that um, I have to admit, I took a look at both your video and the one it was replying to, and these ideas always fascinate me. Um, but um, if I may, um, just again, purely for uh, from the standpoint of a science student, um, you know, truth be told, I think that um, we've always if you'll, uh, if you'll bear with me to um, kind of quibble and wordsmith a little bit here, um, I think that in the context of science, uh, science versus um, scientism, which is the, uh, the, the, the rabid belief of science, you know, to the point where, um, where only those theories which are already in existence and, uh, you know, nothing new exists, you know, you're right, there is a certain amount of that uh, fearful element um, to the point where some people were very, very highly skeptical. And yeah, and that's actually where that fine line comes in. But anyway, I'll I'll get to skepticism in a little bit. Um, the thing is that I think that science, if you will, um, not maybe not necessarily a system, uh, you know, like a system for fearful, but maybe always a system of um, how should we say a system of discovery and then attempting to attempting to generalize based on those discoveries, if you will. And we've been doing it since the beginning of time. Um, I mean, for example. Um, Okay, let, let me let me give you an example of something which I think might be a, a, a limited, you know, a, a question about the system that we're living in here, um, or you know, science going back to beginnings of time. Say, for example, the first caveman. He sees fire. Um, a um, a, per, uh, a person who uh, this would be an example of a discovery, and then later there would be um, theories just about about why it would do it. Um, you know, it would take several hundred years before a, a, a working theory ever came out, but you know people still accepted this. And this is where I've got that little bit of a problem about, about facts of it versus, um, you know, where I've got the problem of distinguishing uh, what is actually found in the data versus uh, trying to worry about theories later once we've actually got a, you know, a possible other, uh, you know, mechanisms that may take hundreds of years. Um, okay, for example, first caveman would have, um, would have figured out, you know, uh, caveman would have seen fire. Uh, would have figured out, you know, seen all the trees burning. Then one caveman accidentally piece of take, takes a piece of wood and starts his own fire with it. And then, of course, he goes like, look what I've done. Everybody else, uh, you know, refuses to believe it first. But then, of course, you know, as more and more people start doing it, they figure out how to replicate a fire. Then some dumbass, uh, well, maybe not dumbass, actually. He, I would call him the first um, inopportune discoverer, purely by accident. Actually, in chemistry, half the discoveries are made by accident, um, you know, of new chemicals and the like. And the same is probably true here. Um, you know, and then, of course, it's later replicated and, you know, the mechanism is figured out at a later date. But anyway, um, so first caveman sticks his hand to the fire discovers it burns and pulls his hand back. And um, and when the other caveman asked him what happened, he said, I burnt my hand. Uh, you know, like, it, it was painful. And uh, they go, nah, right. And then, of course, and then a couple of the others will probably stick their own hands in it. And um, and then, of course, um, and now, if, if you'll allow me to give the analogy of between the fearful, uh, or between the fearful of change and the... Um, uh, the fearful of change and the uh, and the actual people, you know, who will accept uh, new truth... Um, if you'll make, a, if you'll uh, bear with me making an analogy, there's a quote from the Gods of the Copybooks headings: the co the cow returns to the dog returns to its vomit, the sow returns to her mire, and the fool's ba burnt bandaged finger goes wobbling back to the fire. Um, the people who um, the the ones who are fearful and cling to theories or cling to uh, the ideas of what is in existence in order to avoid um, you know in order to avoid basic ideas, um, you know uh, the fools, if you will, are the ones who will. Um, who will still, uh, if, um, you know, put their finger in the fire over and over and over again, and um, you know, and, and they still won't get it. Um, well, maybe not. I wouldn't call them fools. Basically, I'd call them the fearful who 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 uh, who refuse to believe in uh, contrary evidence. And um, ironically, it's on both sides of the equation. Um, and this, 
And sometimes, now we've done this for hundreds of years, and uh, you know there've been plenty of theories about earth, air, fire, water, and theories overall uh, over time have improved. Like we have gotten closer and closer to um, you know the fact that systems have changed. But what's interesting is the fact that elements of the old systems always stayed in place for insofar as they were working. Um, take an example: uh, the idea that the world is flat. We know that that isn't the case anymore. We now have, uh, you know, we now have satellite images. We now have people sailing around the world. We, uh, you know, we have phones from space. Like we have enough, plenty of evidence. However, the concept of a flat Earth um, for certain things such as land surveillance and stuff like that. It, well, again, in some cases, say like you know, on, on prairie ground, the idea that the Earth is a flat surface does have effective limit. Uh, does have effective. Um, scopes, if you will, where mathematical equations, uh, you know, do actually benefit, i.e. in designing of buildings. Now, of course, this doesn't count on, you know, on slopey ground and stuff like that, but, you know, say like on flat prairie ground where you're, say, trying to build a house or, or, or like a floor, like when you're trying to set, um, like, the floor of your own house, the concept of a flat ground does have, does have its advantages. Um, the same with Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics um, is no longer viable for trying to explain the motions of plants and anything off Earth's gravity. But in terms of uh, force, uh, you know, for for momentum of cars or for objects falling to Earth, you know, at a at a certain level inside the atmosphere, it has a useful context. So what happens is that the is that the areas where the limited sphere still works. Um, now, granted, there are paradigms, and this is where the uh, this is where the fearful element comes in. And that's where the paradigm battles are. Is that when a new theory comes in? Um, again, you'll forgive me for quoting Thomas Kuhn here. That um, that when we actually see these these new, you know, when we when we get closer to this uh, to this reality or this you know understanding of uh, of the new variable which comes in and affects everything else, people are fearful of it, and so they try to shut it out until uh, it comes to the point where there's enough evidence or enough idea, if you will, that eventually it sinks in, and then it you know it becomes part of the newer conglomerate, and uh, and then it just simply basically means that the pe you know it's it's like this tentative fearful step forward, but um, I think that humanity in and of itself is innately fearful. Of uh, of what is unknown, and um, and that may not be due to the ego or you know due to the uh, conscious mind or what have you, but just due to the fact that we are self-aware beings um, trying to deal with a universe which is billions upon billions of light years across, um, much of it which we don't know about. I mean, we only, I mean, even I mean, like we've observed now out you know a considerable way, but we still don't even know about extraterrestrial life or not. I mean, we have uh, calculations and theoretical equations which allow. For this sort of thing, we have you know uh, similar environments. You know, like we have we have planets of the similar size. Uh, Sika 581c was a a, a a recent example of this. But that being aside, we don't have a you know like we we, we still have limitations, and so we are we are fearful of it. And um, you know, I mean, there there's even among skeptical uh, communities. Uh, take for example the whole UFO concept or extraterrestrials. There are. Um, there are some there's there's some debate amongst uh, the there are some skeptics who are so fearful of the idea of extraterrestrial life or what or well I wouldn't consider but you know fearful of the implications if the theory should come to exist that they don't even believe that extraterrestrial life could exist period then there are some more moderate skeptics who say okay well based on the current evidence um, we don't have um, uh, we don't you know. Uh, we, you know, we're comfortable based on the math that you know there probably is extraterrestrial life out there, and we like to. Uh, We'd like to, uh, you know, uh, believe in it or what have you, or, 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 you know, at least think that it's out there, and hopefully we might be able to communicate with it. But then they get a little bit more antsy. I don't know if it's about antsy or just lack of evidence. Um, it, it depends on the skeptic. It, it really depends on the skeptic um, coming uh, about e about extraterrestrials being here. And, um, you know, it, it um, science, I think, I think the thing is that a lot of these belief systems, um, what it is that by... True science should be able to accept fluidity. I guess my, my overall point, and I'll elaborate in the next video, um, I guess my overall point is that science should be able, true science um, does accept fluidity to a certain extent, uh, but what it does is that it just simply demands evidence. Um, what it's supposed to do is that, um, is that, say for example, a new, a new anomaly comes up, right? If you get an anomaly repeated enough times, you know, or or like you know enough people get that idea, like like the like you know enough people stick their hand in the fire, they accept the fact. Okay, it burns. Why does it burn? We don't know. Um, which, uh, uh, and that's the current state of uh, of stuff like with telepathy and stuff. It's not so much that we're assuming that telepathy is the mechanism. What we're assuming is okay, we've got an anomaly here. We've got enough replication, or at least the the, the competent skeptics, the competent skeptics who actually realize that a lot of the conventional explanations don't necessarily quite meet up here. Um, they do agree, okay, there's an anomaly here. We have to research that. But telepathy? We don't know. Mechanism? We don't know. 
You know, it's 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 like what Newton's gravitational idea used to be. Uh, Newton initially came up with his laws of gravitation, and they were rejected um, by his fellow peers because they couldn't understand the action at a distance. I'll explain more in the next video to give an analogy.